Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, brethren. This is the day that the Lord has made. The God that we serve has yet done a new thing. He has given us a new day, a new Thursday. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome whoever is on any of our channels, Facebook, YouTube. You are welcome to this Thursday service. Hallelujah. Without wasting much of our time, let us begin by giving thanks. Psalm 103, verse 1. This is what the Lord says. He says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Praise the Lord. We are here because we've not forgotten that it is he who gave us this wonderful year. We are here because we've not forgotten that it is he who has provided for us during this whole season. Hallelujah. We are here because we've not forgotten that it is he that is protecting us in the midst of whatever is happening. Praise the Lord. So wherever you are, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, if you're driving and you're listening to us, please park that car, take a moment, let us go before the Lord's presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let us lift our hands and bless him. Because we've not forgotten, because we have not forgotten that it is him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Lord, we have not forgotten that it is you that has given us this wonderful year. Lord, it is not, we have not forgotten that it is you that has changed the times to a wonderful month once again. Lord, we have not forgotten that it is you that is providing daily and daily while others are lacking. Lord, we have not forgotten that it is you that is protecting. So we lift up our hands and worship you. We lift up our hands and give you glory and honor and praise because you alone deserve it. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, the Bible says that he changes the times and the seasons. Hallelujah. And the Lord has changed our season once again. He has given us a wonderful month. If you're there, please shout a hallelujah. Put your hands together and get excited because of what he's doing. Hallelujah. We are now a wonderful month of his marvelous light, of God's presence. Hallelujah. And the scripture says, the scripture says it is in Psalm 89, 15. It says, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Now, meaning that walking in the light of God's countenance is a function of knowledge. Hallelujah. So, you're going to lift up your hands wherever you are and welcome his instruction this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We welcome your instruction today. We welcome your instruction. We welcome your instruction. We welcome your instruction. Come and teach us this whole month. Come and teach us to know the sound of your joy, the sound, the joyful sound of your word. Come and teach us, O King of Glory. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 2 6 that the Lord gives wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Lord, open, teach us that wisdom, that knowledge that is coming out of your mouth this whole month, this whole month, starting with this very Thursday. Father, we bless you and thank you in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. And everyone said, wherever you are, amen. Now, in, we can't go any further without welcoming his Holy Spirit. John 14, 26 says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. My prayer today that he may teach me the joyful sound, that he may teach me to know his joyful sound. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we welcome you today. Come and fill me and teach me the joyful sound of the Lord's presence. The joyful sound. The joyful sound of the Lord's presence. Lord, we bless you. Holy Spirit, I welcome you in the mighty and precious name of Jesus Christ. I've prayed and everyone said, Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as you welcome the choir, the Bible says that the kings shall praise your name when they hear thy words. May you praise his name as we hear his words this whole month. As we hear his joyful sound this whole month. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah.
Mwana chitu ukiri de chiveri chitafo wevi akaya kate muli mchivi Teba kulimba ati yesu avamwe chivi Kale itabiru nchi Kale imose mikono ujo Mkale iti mkuhi mbiro luimba Mkusiza katonda wange Oli mkulu Oli wanyosebo Wamala ya yesu Oli biona Ani ya kufana na Ani ya kuhikana Yesu tunyumirua kuwela woko Tunyumirua Tunyumirua Simanche tuinza kunyo nyolote gerechi tunyumirua Na ye tunyumirua sebo Tunyumirua kuwela woko Tunyumirua mazima go Tunyumirua chitanga alacho Tunyumirua ebikambo vyo Tuwa omeru kuwela woko Kuwanga mkwe tutu ukiride Na kuyimbira uliimba mkama wangu Choli mukulu, choli mulungi, choli katondo, choli kabaka. Oh, I am a kama, wange wendo waza, kubieto na no mukono gwa nganage dio. Tangala cho chidavi kaona ai mukama ai mukama ai mukama wange wendo uza ulo kole ndo uza kubulu njibwa yesu kuwe watu ndave chikambe chifuma kubele veri katonga na gamba ati wale we chitangala ndave mungu ndave mungu ndave mungu ndave mungu ndave mungu
Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. Was it that wonderful, wonderful, wonderful praise and worship? Then sings my soul, Savior, go to thee. Keep on worshiping the Lord. Keep on worshiping the Lord. Tell him, Lord, you are wonderful. Lord, you are glorious. I thank you for this moment. I thank you for your presence. My soul is singing. My soul is singing with gladness and with joy. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again and praise the Lord. Another day has come. We are in God's presence. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. We Shall we put our hands together for the Lord, for the opportunity he's given us to be in his presence? Don't take it lightly. Don't take it lightly. It is awesome for us to be in God's presence. And praise the Lord. You're welcome. Every member of Kampala Bible Revelation Church, the women of Revelation, the men of Revelation, the youth of Revelation, the children of Revelation, all the ministers, the pastors. And if you're not a member of Kampala Bible Revelation Church, you are welcome. We thank God for this time that the Lord has given us. We have gathered together in the name of Jesus. So the location is the name. Praise the Lord. The location is the name. We have gathered in his name and we know that every time he's in our midst, he does great, great things. Even today, he's going to do amazing and great things. So uh, the, today is Thursday. It's our midweek service. And we are going to hear from the Lord. The Lord has given us a word. So I want us to prepare ourselves. I want you to close this eye and say, Lord, speak to me. Lord Jesus, speak to me. Send your word. Open my ears to hear your voice. Lord, send the healing word, the joy-giving word, the miracle-working word, the wisdom-giving word. I receive it right now. Lord, I believe without your word, I am nothing. I'm totally cut off. But with your word, I have every victory. Father, I thank you as I receive your word right now. And I thank you that your word is coming with power. Your word is coming with revelation and healing. I thank you, Father, for your word in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said a good amen and amen. Praise the Lord. We have worshipped the Lord. We have sung. We Now we are happy. I, I, I feel the joy of the Lord in my heart because I know he's with me. Today's word, because every Thursday we are, the Lord is opening our eyes to see his marvelous light. This is my year. <laughs> this is my year of his marvelous light that we must show forth, that we may show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. That this whole year is my year of his marvelous light and I'm going to show forth his praises. And in this month, a new month, uh, then changing, change, change the season. And this month is marvelous lights of God's presence. Marvelous light of God's presence. His presence is going to manifest in our lives as never before. Praise the Lord. His presence is going to manifest in our lives as never before. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And the scripture for this month, the scripture for this month is Psalm 80. Is in Psalms 89 verse 15. Psalm 89 and verse 15. It's awesome. Psalm 89 and verse 15. Praise the Lord. It says, blessed is the people. It begins with a blessing. So in this month you are blessed. In this month, you are blessed. In this, begin to speak your blessings out. So it's a, blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your countenance, in the light of your presence. Those who know the joyful sound. And you know the joyful sound. The gospel is the, <laughs> the, gospel is the joyful sound. That's the good news. That's the Joyful sound. Praise the Lord. So we will, we will come to all that. But today the Lord is leading us into his marvelous light. And today is a marvelous light for seeing the unseen. Seeing the unseen. Seeing the unseen. From the day you got born again. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You become a new creature. Bless the name of Jesus. And in this year of his marvelous light. 
God has given you his marvelous light that you may be able to see the unseen, to see that which the natural man, with all his education, with all his experience, and every accolade that they make, carry or gather around them with all that which they cannot see. And by the way, when you are born again, you have to begin to see the unseen. That's what it means to live by faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you, are, if you live by faith, that means you are able to see things which are not seen, which are not naturally seen. <laughs> by the way, the world is looking for people who can see the unseen. And, uh, you know, it's very unfortunate that, uh, you know, people have been fleeced. People's, you know, property has been stolen simply because there is someone masquerading that he sees the unseen. But for you, the child of God, you need to know, this year is my year of his marvelous light that I may see the unseen. Oh, bless the name of... Let's go to the first scripture. It is in the New Testament, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4 and verse 19. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 4 and verse 19. It says, And being not weak in faith, he caught... I'm reading Romans chapter 4 and verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. How can a 100-year-old man begin to give glory to God that he's going to have a child? How can that be? He must be seeing the unseen. Abraham was seeing Isaac. This is when this is what the Bible is telling us here. That though his body was now dead, and even Sarah's body was now dead, because Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. Abraham, <laughs> he says he was not weak in faith, because he did not consider. So he refused to see what the natural man sees. Wow. <laughs> he refused to see what the natural man sees, what has your boss said? What has your boss said? What, ha what, what have those in authority, what, 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 what have they said? What are you going to believe? Are you going to be weak in faith because of what they have said? <laughs> Abraham was not weak in faith because he did not consider his body which was dead by that time and did not consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. What does that mean? Abraham was seeing the unseen. And in this today, the marvelous light of God is coming upon your life. That you may begin to see the unseen just like Abraham. When everyone else could not see Isaac, Abraham was seeing Isaac. Abraham was strong in faith, was giving glory to God. Think about it. Giving glory to God for a hundred years. Abraham, <laughs> at a hundred, Abraham is giving thanks, giving glory to God. Is believing God for a son? Oh, that's what we are seeing the unseen. You need to begin to see the That's how you'll be different from all the, the others. All the others are talking what they are talking because of what they are seeing. They see naturally. They look at situations naturally. They use natural senses. But we are not like that. We are born again. You were born again from the day you got born again. You moved into another sense. It's called the spirit. The spirit of God. You are able to see in the spirit. You are able to see the unseen. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. The Lord has, is giving us his marvelous light in this year. That we may begin to see the unseen. You begin to see that marriage which is not there yet you begin to see your miracle child which is not there yet you begin to see 
your graduation, which is not there yet. But if you begin to go by natural eyes, if you begin to, to go by natural things, by, by the, the way people see things naturally, it, you'll be weak in faith. For you to be strong in faith, you must begin to see the unseen. And I'll show you how shortly. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So, he has said in verse 20 that he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Why? Because by the promise, he was able to see the unseen. By the promise. Because the promise said, you're going to be a father of nations. <laughs> you're going to be a father of many nations. <laughs> and when he believed that promise, he began to see his son coming. And that's what you need to see right, right now. So how do I see the unseen? By the promises of God. How do I see the unseen? By, in other words, the promises of God are the marvelous light. The promises of God are your light by which you are able to see what a natural man cannot see. Shout a good amen and praise the Lord. I've got, let me give you some good, good examples. Here. Go with me to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 25. And I know something good is happening right now. You are beginning to see the unseen. You are beginning to see, and, and some of you are on the inside, you are beginning to rise up. You are beginning to have expectation. Something, something is about to happen. Praise the Lord. So 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse 25. It says, and the men, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Talking about Goliath. Surely to defy Israel is he come up. <laughs> oh, what else would he, would he have come to do? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him, and, and, uh, and he, he, uh, even before I go any further, look at that. Who are these ones who are saying, and the man who will kill him, wh why don't they go and kill him? They have heard from, <laughs> from King Saul that any man who kills this man will be given riches. Will be give now, the question is, why didn't they go? Why, why, did, why didn't any of them go? But every time this guy used to come up, they just rushed and hid themselves. <laughs> Isn't that so interesting? That is to let you know that there are people who cannot see what you see. I'm serious about this. There are people who cannot see what you see. There are people who not see the unseen, just like you see it. And don't take it lightly. God is up to something. He's taking you someplace. He's going to show you his greatness you've never seen before. Now, they, they, they were talking and say, the man who kills him, eh? Have you seen how that guy has come to... to, to, to to, to frighten us. <laughs> but, but the man who killed him, he said, who kills him? The king will enrich him with great riches and give him his daughter and make his father's house free in his... No, why don't you go and kill him? You even know. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Verse 26 says, And David sp spoke to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Have you heard what David has said? Wow. This man was, this boy was seeing the unseen. He saw, he, he's a giant, yes. Goliath is a, is a giant, but he's uncircumcised. <laughs> you know, the guy is gross, several feet tall. And huge, and is a man of war. But David said, Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? What does that mean? What does that mean? Then he said, How can he come and defy the armies of the living God? What do you think David was seeing? David was seeing the unseen. All these others were seeing Goliath, a strong man. Every time he showed up, they could run and hide. And they could say, but the king has promised that whoever will kill him, he, he will enrich in him and even give him his daughter and even <laughs> free his family from taxes. Oh, no. What are you seeing? By what you are saying. What are you seeing? By what you are saying. What are you seeing by what you are saying? Because what you are saying is telling me what you are seeing. 
David did not see this giant. David saw an uncircumcised Philistine. And do you know why that, that, that is so important? Because, <laughs> do you know that we have just read about Abraham in Romans chapter 4? Abraham made, God made a covenant with Abraham. And the, and, and, and the sign of that covenant was circumcision. And everyone that was in that covenant was a, was, 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 had a covenant with God. They were people of God. They were the chosen of the Lord. And there's no way you could touch them. Touching them would mean touching God. So that's what David saw. How did David see this? Through the scriptures, through the promises. Goliath was a giant, yes, but he was uncircumcised. That thing which is standing before you is uncircumcised, I'm telling you. Those deaths you are looking at, they are uncircumcised. That disease is uncircumcised. It is not in the covenant of God. And you can rise up right now and take it on just like David took it on. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So David saw the unseen. How? Through the promises of God. God had promised that now you are, you are my people. I have a covenant with you through Abraham. I have a covenant with you through Abraham. No one can stand before you. No one can come against you and walk over you and overcome you. Everyone who touches you has touched me. That's what God said. Wow. Bless. So do you see now that David, that only David saw the unseen? This man was dressed in, 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 in great armory. You know, he had, you know, he had those the iron all over. You know, the helmet, the, the breastplate, everything. He had a big, big spear. He had a big, big, uh, a big shield. The, the guy was shocking just at sight. David said, no way. That guy is uncircumcised. And secondly, he has defied the army of the living God. No one defies the army of the living God and goes away unpunished. Just like today, no one defies a child of God. Yes, a born again, a child of God, and goes away unpunished. <laughs> please, please, let, let, me, let me show you. You, you, you need to... Listen, we, this year is his marvelous light. This year is my of his marvelous light that I may see the unseen. Stop crying with those people you're crying with. Stop crying with those people. You are able to see the unseen. Oh, they have said they're going to send all of us. Uh, they, they're going to cut all of us. Who has said so? Who has said so? What are you seeing? They are crying. Oh, there's no money. Oh, we don't know what, what, what we're going to do. We are stranded. There's no money. That devil is a liar. Is it all about money? What are you seeing? You need to begin to see the... Oh, you need to begin to see the unseen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me show you. Go with me to, to Second Kings. Second Kings chapter 5. <laughs> this is getting interesting. Second Kings chapter 5. This is my of his marvelous light that I may begin to see the unseen. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse 15. Praise the Lord. Verse 15. It says in verse 15, And he returned to the man of God. Now this is Naaman. You know the story of Naaman and the prophet Elisha? And he returned to the man of God. <laughs> man of God. You know, there's a way we call it. We, we, we say it. He and, all, he, and, he and all his company and came and stood before him. And he said, Behold now, I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. So Naaman is telling the prophet to take something from him. He had brought him something because he had been healed. Verse but he said, Elisha said, As the Lord liveth, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Oh, if it was in our days. <laughs> if it was, have you had some people in our days, before they even pray for someone to, to get healed, they've asked for something. Send something on my mobile money. <laughs> One brother told me, you know, I went and prayed for someone. Actually, that, that's the card that you're saying there. I said, how do the two, I asked him, how do the two connect? You went to pray for someone and you're showing me the car. 
Yes. I, I, I told him that when God heals you, you'll give me the, that car. Ah. Ah. <laughs> if it were Jesus, would he have done that? If it were Jesus, would he have done that? The devil. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. So, Naaman is telling this Elisha. El Elisha said, no, I'm taking none of your blessing. You, you are calling it. Naaman was calling it a blessing, but Elisha was seeing otherwise. Elisha was seeing the unseen. So when he refuses, Gehazi says, what is this man of God thinking? <laughs> Rush quickly to verse 20. <laughs> but Gehazi, the servant of Elisha, the man of God said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, this Syrian, in not receiving at his hands that which he brought. But as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Yeah, and so he did. And so he did. And so he did. So what happened after he had taken it? Verse 27. Now, this is what Elisha saw, the unseen. Verse 27, Elisha said to Gehazi, The leprosy, therefore, of the of of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. What Gehazi didn't see was that all Naaman's riches have leprosy on them. And that the reason Elisha refused to take any is because Elisha was not refusing the riches or the blessing. Elisha was refusing leprosy. You have to see the answer. Most, so many children of God have fallen into this trap. Have fallen into it. Rich men call them and give them things. Rich men call them and give them this and give them. Even before they call them, they themselves, the children of God, call those rich men and ask them for things. The Lord is saying to me, that car is mine. The Lord is saying to me, the other house is mine. The Lord is saying to me, that plot is mine. Little do they know that what they are taking actually is leprosy. You have to see the unseen. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. So in this year of his marvelous light, his light is coming upon your life. You are beginning to see the unseen. That you may not be trapped like Gehazi was. That you may see through the the decorations of the devil <laughs> like david saw through goliath's armor and he saw that he was uncircumcised oh bless the name of jesus if you're in second kings let's go to chapter seven and I, i'm telling you this is awesome this is a marvelous light has come that you may begin to see the unseen that you may begin to see that you are trying all that you can to get to some people you know that they may give you this or that or the other, but I'm telling you, if that if they have leprosy, that leprosy will jump on you. And you and by the way, you don't have to. When God will supply all your need according to His riches in glory, yes, the Lord will supply all your need according to His riches in glory. Second Kings chapter seven verse one. Then Elisha said, "Hear ye the word of the Lord." I love this. Hear ye the word of the Lord. That says the Lord. Tomorrow. About this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. In other words, he said, tomorrow time as this, there shall be plenty in Israel. There shall be plenty. <laughs> how, how was he able to see this? Because by this time, women had begun to eat their children because of hunger. This is extreme hunger. When a woman begins to cut her child and boil that child and eat that child. That is extremism. That's how far, you know, they were eating doves dung and, 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 and a donkey's head was costing, in our, in our currency, it would be a million. That's how far, the, how far worse the situation had got. Then Elisha came and said, tomorrow, but that's not what he said first. He said, he said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord. So through God's word, he was able to see the unseen. Through the promises of God, he was able to see the unseen. This marvelous light coming upon your life is in the promises. If you want to see the unseen, begin to dig into the promises of God. 
begin to dig into the word of God. Someone has said, ah, there he goes. Motoki is again with the word of God. He's biased with the word of God. Yeah, actually you're right, I'm biased. But because you know what? When this marvelous light is coming into your life, you need to dig into the promises of God that you may begin to see the unseen. Because it is the unseen that is eternal. The unseen is eternal. Whatever you see naturally is very temporary. Whatever <laughs> you see people's riches and you want to, you know, to steal them. Those riches you see with your eyes are very temporary. Whatever is unseen is eternal. Bless the name of Jesus. And this is why we are getting the marvelous light in this year. To begin to see the unseen. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Now, let me conclude with... Uh, with John. Let, let's go to the New Testament. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. Praise the Lord. John chapter 2 and verse 18. John chapter 2 and verse 18. You must be feeling so blessed. <laughs> you, are, you are beginning to see the unseen. And by the way, when you begin to see the unseen, even the way you speak, everything changes. Even the way you think, everything changes. Abraham, when he began to see Isaac, who was unseen then, he was strong in faith. He did not weaken in faith. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to someone specifically. He did not grow weak in faith. He grew strong in faith when he saw the unseen by the promise of God. So, John chapter 2 verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou, or do you show unto us? Seeing that thou doest the things, seeing that you do the things, what sign do you show us? Because we see you doing the things. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days <laughs> I'll raise it up. Uh, really? What did he say? Destroy this temple. They, there's no way they could destroy it, of course. It was huge, it was magnificent, it was. It, it, it was heavily protected. There is no way they could destroy it. So Jesus tells them, you destroyed this temple. And I'll raise it up. He, <laughs> he said, I'll raise it up. He didn't say, I'll build it up. He said, I'll raise it up. And, and, and I'll raise it up in three days. One, two, three. <laughs> what was Jesus saying? What was Jesus saying? Verse 21 says, uh, the, uh, verse 20 says, Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. That's the natural man speaking. That's the natural man speaking. That's the, the natural man telling you, 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 know, you, you just can't become rich just, just like that. You, you just cannot get healed just like that. You, you just cannot prosper just like that. You can't, you can't just pass just like that. That's the natural man. Forty. He said, 46 years was this temple in building. And will you rear it up in three days? <laughs> but he spoke of the temple of his body. Of course, this is John writing because John now has the revelation. John is seeing what Jesus saw. What was Jesus seeing when he said this? What was Jesus seeing when he said this? He was seeing the unseen. He was seeing the cross. He was seeing his death on the cross. He was seeing my salvation. He was seeing your salvation. He was seeing you born again in the kingdom. It was you he was seeing. It was you he was seeing. It, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. Actually, he meant his death. That he will die and on the third day he'll rise again. Why did he die? He died for me. Why did he rise again? He, ra he rose from the dead for me. According to the scriptures. And now I'm here, I'm born again, you are born again. You are a child of God, filled with the power of God, filled with the anointing, filled with the wisdom of God, filled with blessings. You, you are a, a, a joint heir with Christ because of what Jesus saw, which no other man could see. Jesus saw the cross. Jesus saw the cross. Jesus saw his blood flowing out of his body and washing away all our sins. They, Jesus saw his beating when he said, destroy this temple. Actually, he was destroyed that I may be built up. He was destroyed. He became seen. He became a curse. He carried all my diseases. 
He died, the Son of God died on the cross that I may be born again, that I may receive the blessing of God, that I may be healed of all my diseases, that all my sins will be washed away. Bless the name of Jesus. Seeing the unseen, let his marvelous light come upon your life and begin to see the answer. You are about to see your victory. You can't see it naturally, but you're, you must see it before you see it in the natural. By the way, that which is unseen is what pushes me into prayer. When Abraham began to see Isaac, he was strong in faith. He was not weak in faith. He began to take his Isaac. I take my Isaac. He was giving glory to God every morning. Lord, I thank you for my Isaac. I thank you for my son. I, because he was seeing the unseen. How did he see the unseen? By the promise of God. God had said unto him, I have made you a father of many nations. So every morning he was seeing his Isaac. Lord, I thank you for Isaac. Because you have made me a father of many nations. I give you glory. And he did not consider his body at a hundred. At a hundred. And his wife who was at 90, he did not consider all that. He considered the promise of God. He saw the unseen. He was strong in faith. I see you strong in faith. I see you rising from that predicament. I see you getting out of that mess. I see you rising up again. I see you going higher. I see you being blessed. I see you handling your blessings in your hands. In that You shall not die. You will live. You will see the goodness of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Pray, well... That was, <laughs> that's the word for today. That's the word for today. Begin to see the unseen. Why? Because his marvelous light has come upon you. How? By the promises of God. I don't care that Goliath standing before you. He's uncircumcised. With one stone, he'll be down. And that stone is the word of God. The stone that cut off himself from the rock without hands. Yes, it, that giant is coming down. That giant is coming down. That child will not die. Your husband will not die. Your wife will not die. None of you shall die. None of you shall, none of you shall perish with any disease in the name of Jesus. If you're not born again and you're, you're on, on this program, oh, I'm so glad. So many people have given their lives to Christ through this program on, in service, in this online service. Say these words together with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I believe with my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And I believe with my heart to receive your righteousness. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And with my mouth I confess I am born again. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I am glad I am born again. Amen. Amen, you are born again. You can let me know, just like all others. And the rest of us, tell the Lord. Father, I thank you for your marvelous light. I thank you for your marvelous light. I thank you for your marvelous light. I thank you for your marvelous light because I'm beginning to see the unseen. I'm beginning to see that I'm getting out of I'm getting out of the natural sights. I'm getting out of the I'm beginning to see the unseen. I'm beginning I'm beginning to see the glory of God. I'm beginning to see the promises of God come to pass. I'm beginning to see the power of God fill my life because I'm seeing the unseen. I will not be cut off from my job. Instead, I'm going to be promoted. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm not going to lack anything. Instead, I'm, go, I'm going to be filled with everything. Lord, I believe I'm seeing the unseen. I shall not die of sickness, but I shall live to tell of your wonders. I will not be poor because I'm seeing myself Rich by your riches, tell the Lord, let your marvelous light open my eyes to see the unseen. Lord, let your marvelous light open my eyes to see the unseen. I refuse to be a failure. I refuse to be under. I refuse this sickness. Maybe it's a sickness in your home. Maybe it's, I, I, I don't know what you're going through. Whatever you're going through right now, ask the Lord for his marvelous light that you may begin to see the unseen. Though Goliath is standing before you, all you've been seeing is a giant. Right now, you begin to see the unseen. He's uncircumcision. He's not circumcised. And right now, he's coming down with the word of God. He's coming down by the promise of God. For he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. By that promise, every weapon has been destroyed right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my victory. 
Begin to give thanks for your victory. By the way, your faith is your victory. So begin to thanks because you believe. Begin to give thanks because you believe. Begin to give thanks. Lord, we thank you, we magnify you, and bless you. For today we worship you in Jesus' precious name. And every believer said a good amen and amen. My brother, my sister, it's been a joy to share with you God's word. I'm so grateful to God that his word has come with wisdom, with his marvelous light. You begin to see the unseen. So forget all the witchcraft. Forget all those bad dreams. Forget everything that's not of the kingdom of God. And begin to stand on the promises of God. This marvelous life is, is beginning to show you the unseen in Jesus' name. Well, we are meeting again on, on Sunday. <laughs> and the Lord bless you. <laughs> Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever with his marvelous light. Forever with his marvelous light. One more time. Forever with his marvelous light. Amen and amen. God bless you. Make you to shine. Bye-bye.